Welcome to a quick open source tech update. QEMU 6.2 is out, uh, generic written in C but um, <clears throat> readable and sorted um, compared to like VirtualBox, which is a little bit of a messy code base, open source machine emulator and virtualizer. Many of you probably know this if you're new to this stuff. Um, as I said, much preferable over VirtualBox for more readable sorted sources, despite being C, but also emulating all the, emulating not virtual, uh, virtualizing all the architectures from ARM to probably even Hewlett Packard Precision Architecture and everything in between. New today, 6.2, um, yeah, decades in the making. And uh, new is, among other things, support for uh, hypervisor framework on Mac OS for Apple Silicon, which is also what we run here already. Yeah, so pro tip, silence your phone before you go live. So we tested this already extensively um, here on this channel and we run this actually here right now. The performance is actually very good, especially on this M1 Max. And um, right now we tested this, we have also run Asai Linux natively, but due to the lack of drivers and maybe CPU frequency scaling and stuff. Um, I think native Asai Linux, the clocks didn't even run at the full frequency. So right now, not only with graphic performance and Wi-Fi support and stuff, much more preferable way to run your favorite Linux on M1 Max. And of course we test build updating that here. And uh, of course there are as usual quite some other changes. Uh, even as I said, emulating other architectures like Motorola 68K, um, improved Apple Nubus support stuff like that is commonly removed from the Linux kernel, um, obviously because vintage and stuff. Tiny little details like Mac frame buffer, Mac, Mac frame buffer um, not supporting more video modes and tiny little details like this. As mentioned, Mac OS Apple Silicon support, hypervisor framework. And uh, also, I found it can crash if you run this with HiMem. In previous videos, initially I was quite surprised and, and stumbled why my uh, whole Mac instantly rebooted. So don't try that with HiMem. And also, they fixed a tiny little thing. Um, I was I didn't even notice that. So I, I've run with CPU something ARM whatever eight plus a hypervisor. And I didn't even pay much attention and that doesn't work anymore with release candidate four or five from yesterday. So between the first release candidate, they changed um, of not passing mm, down the hypervisor support bit there because according to the documentation that is not supported um, by Apple's hypervisor framework. So that is basically not running, um, not supporting hypervisor like nested hypervisor, um, hypervisor in which hypervisor. Um, Fujis, Fujitsu processor stuff, but that is only in TCG. Um, other little details. I mean, for many architectures, I wonder if there's really nothing. Sometimes, of course, this uh, change log is missing a little bit, but yes, this is basically all the architectures. Like, as I mentioned, Hewlett Packard Precision Architecture, um, Open Risk, and stuff. And Power 10 support improvements. Um, the problem with that is, of course, that not too many people have Power 10 stuff because expensive. And uh, risk five though, there is support for the new um, bit manipulation extension, at least set B, A, B, C, S support um, and new Sci-5 High 5 devices uh, here, Sci-5 full source modulation, not that it yeah, would be the most important, but it is there. And there's uh, fun stuff like um, fix for booting Sun for machines with more than one CPU. And uh, yeah, x86. I mean, nowadays, it's also the, the funny development, right? That nowadays x86 uh, least changes here, at least as seen here, um, all the latest and greatest, and probably at ARM and PowerPC. Anyway, of course, otherwise, rock solid. Most people run this, of course, on their server side as well. Um, even I think Xen was using that, maybe still using that for the user space parts um, to run other Xen guests. But otherwise, of course, what is otherwise known as KVM, basically hypervisor, if you're new to this stuff, hypervisor framework is Apple's implementation um, of in-kernel provided 
Virtual Machine Support that is on the Linux side, uh, the KVM that you see here, so the kernel based virtual machine API um, equivalent there. And that is of course what uh, we have run for over a decade um, to test our Linux kernel development. Um, run Mac OS also here, yeah, if, if you want some other pro tips, x86 Intel, Macintosh stuff can run in KVM QEMO as well, as long as it still exists, because obviously Apple is transitioning to the Apple Silicon. Anyway, that's a quick update. This update should be, also we actually, do we have zero frames? Looks like that is stable because we are actually loading the VM. So yeah, this stuff is so snappy that, um, uh, so snappy and why do we not have mouse here? Oh, maybe we have here some control alt, or whatever. Anyway, yeah. Um, Pretty impressed for on the performance side with Apple ARM64, Apple Silicon, so we will continue this. And if you are interested in this stuff, T2 now, also our T2, our Linux distribution now supports Apple Mac Homebrew, um, or starting to support that will be significantly improved the next weeks and months, so that you can use T2, um, proven, reliable, professional, raw, minimal Linux build system to emerge sources like your emu on mac os and exactly what i've done here and, and running this so this QEMU running here of course what i built myself on the last live streams here with t2 um, meta distribution scripts um, for the ease i should point out for me it does not just build i need one patch of course it is in t2 so some io vector include some are missing not no idea how it compiles for others Maybe they use another tool chain or older Mac OS. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in that patch, that is in T2. And um, new QMO release on. So yeah, I mean, it's basically running here, right? We're asking for demo, so that is already running there. Um, just that somehow sometimes, oh no, no, that why is, oh no, yeah, sometimes uh, modifier state. Also, um, there is this ISO keyboard, which, yeah, this, this key, I probably should debug and so should I, the problem is always debugging this. So for me, it's super amazing and a little bit limited of this ISO keyboard key um, being swapped and not working. That is an implementation detail of Apple's keyboard, um, decade old Bluetooth keyboard stuff that I use stuff until it, um, as long as it works, obviously. Um, not the most impressive with this keyboard though. And I always knew that from Linux, right? I knew that this key, key codes generate strange key codes and some are swapped. No idea what Apple was thinking there, but um, I thought it's a Linux only thing. I'm totally surprised that this also is a macOS thing. So on macOS, passing this down. Um, so as you see, I'm pressing that key. This is uh, obviously that key and that key does nothing. So that is the only implementation marginality. Maybe you can work around this with running this through VNC or um, running Wayland with um, remote desktop protocol or something, but tiny little annoyance. Also, the crazy thing is this tiny annoyance is super annoying when you get want to get work done because it also prevents you from um, typing the pipe symbol and in, in input redirection and stuff, which is totally annoying. But anyway, this is crazy, right? Super amazing performance, um, driver support and stuff, and then killed by one key code. It's like, yeah, 2021. Anyway. Just wanted to short this out. Leave me in the comments below um, if I should do more uh, small tech updates. That is basically that for this update. Um, for me, of course, QEMO is amazing for decades already, proven stuff. And um, uh, let's see, problem was uh, Eric asks, have you experienced or heard of C6 state freezing problems on Ryzen on Linux? Um, not really, I have nothing Freezing. Um, I only have well. I only only I only have three Ryzen, so of which I only run two. Um, the initial 2700 I don't run. That is on the shelves for spare parts. So I'm only running um, two ASUS boards, one mini ITX, one X570 workstation ACE, and I'm only running the 3950X and the 5950X. So maybe if that is affecting mobile skews only, I don't know. But yeah, I've not really heard about this. Um, and on those two Ryzen systems, although yes, I'll, I'll buy high performance Ryzen systems, on, on both of them, I have no problems except the X2 APIC stuff, which I debugged like a weekend previous video and patched for me. 
um, that didn't lead to problems at, except the virtualization performance marginal and, and CPU frequency scaling issue that is patched with that patch, but that sounds unrelated to that. But anyway, if you want more stuff, um, we have this more live channel, right? Um, and uh, yeah, new, new year resolution, a little bit more sorted, more professional video and stuff. So don't forget to share, like, and subscribe for that and join the more live channel. We uh, probably, I have to, uh, to finish some T2 scripting of even more full features cross compilation support. So you might want to join that in some minutes or hour or so on the more live channel. And I hope to see you soon for all the next fun stuff to come.